So in the last video, our amazing startup app, which just connects to the database is absolutely ready. In this video, we are going to go ahead and containerize this application. While containerizing in the previous project, we have seen this one very specific problem, which was we have to again and again delete the node module folder. In this video, we're gonna see a more or kind of a better solution of the problem that we were facing. So let me introduce you to the docker ignore file. In case you are coming up from my git course or you have taken that somewhere else as well, or you know about it, you know that we have a file dot git ignore. In this file, we keep all the files and folders and directories by, by basically, I mean to say that folders and directory are same, sorry. So what it does is you can just put the name of files and folders and it will just ignore while uh, making the git of that project. Almost similar concept exists in the Docker as well. So let's go ahead and create a new file. This new file, let's go up here, is known as Docker Ignore. And of course, this is a dot file. So that means for the regular eyes, it's gonna be totally empty, but for the code editors and special mode can actually see that. So just put a dot first and then simply write the name, which is, if I can type that correct, Docker Ignore. There we go. Now this dot ignore, uh, dot, docker ignore file is actually super easy to handle and make sure everything is in the lowercase, no capital D or anything like that. Once we hit this dot docker ignore, all we have to do is simply go ahead and mention the folder name or the files uh, which you really want to ignore. There is nothing super fancy or extraordinary in that. So let's go ahead and write this node underscore modules. Now, whenever the containerizing is gonna start, it's first gonna look into the docker ignore file and it's gonna take a list of all the files and folders and will ignore them while containerizing your application. Let's go ahead and save this. So there we go, that's it, it's pretty much easy. But I really don't want to close the video right here because we have still more time. I really don't want to create that much of short videos, but want to keep them somewhere between 10 and 11 minutes, okay. Moving further, we can now create our actual file, which is gonna be the Docker file, because the goal is to containerize this application first. Okay, remember, if you remember from the diagram as well, we have created this app, now we are creating this outside border, which is the dotted line, to containerize this application. And then we're gonna create this DB as well, containerize that as well, and we'll move forward from there. So let's go ahead and open this one, and let's go ahead and create a new file. And this one is gonna be simply docker, oops, docker file. There we go. Now, how do we copy this? It's pretty basic and pretty obvious. We have seen that so far as well. I think you can write that before me as well. Please go ahead and do it if you really want to do it. So we're gonna take an image of node. We're gonna take a very basic or minimum image, which is gonna be alpine. But here's a quick thing. I want to mention this. Although we are taking this alpine image here, but that is not gonna be recommended in most of the production grade application. In the production grade application, I would rather like to mention a specific node number. And you're gonna see something like this, that I want to use a node eight or node 10, whatever that is. This will bring a specific version of the node and will install in the base image. This is a production grade, but since we are still playing around with the stuff, not moving in the production grade yet, so I'm gonna use the Alpine, which is the bare minimum basic image of the node. Okay, that's now clear up, a uh, little really, really basic stuff. So we're gonna mention our working directory as well. So I want to keep it inside the slash war slash app, something like that is great. And after that, I want to copy my package.json file first. Remember, we discussed that in the earlier as well. So I'm gonna simply have copy suggestion, please. Yep. So we're gonna simply say, I want to copy package dot json file into the dot slash means this is my working directory on my machine this last one is on the container itself so once we have copied it now we want to run a command which is going to be npm install since it's a node machine it will be able to run it no problem at all then we are going to copy rest of the project so we're going to simply say dot and dot i can say uh, like this as well that copy dot slash into dot slash current directory, but you're gonna see in a lot of node files that they say dot and dot means, whenever you see this means copy all the current folders and files into the current working directory of the container. So you can see that as well. Again, just to have some vari variety here. 
And then finally, the default command that we are gonna have is gonna be an array of strings. And the command is really simple, npm, comma, another string, start. There we go. And notice, once you, when you started the series of the Docker, you had no idea how these files are going on, and now you're just understanding them just like a breeze. If, you, if that's the case, I think you should hit that like button and subscribe as well. Okay, let's go ahead and save this, and now it's time that we build this container up here. But do I really want to build this container? Because if I'm gonna build this container right now, and I try to run that, it's not gonna be much of a great deal. Let's go ahead and try that. So, and it's definitely gonna give us some error. So let's hit Control L, and I want to build it. So I'm gonna simply say docker build, build, and of course D, but I want to tag that as well. I have shown you that the tagging actually works on my username, then slash and something, but that is a great way. There can be shortcuts and hack, which are not so great way, but in this case, uh, it can just work up like that. So we're gonna simply say node S, just for fun. So that's gonna be the name of my image and then a dot. So I can hit enter and there we go. It's gonna just install the NPM and all kind of a stuff. But still our image is gonna be called as node S. And there we go. Finally, node S colon latest is up and running. Now I want to run this as well. So I'm gonna simply say node, node, not node, <laughs> docker. I'm gonna simply say docker run and node S. We're gonna hit enter and there we go. Error in DB connection and also, notice here, very important, we're gonna discuss that later on, that we got a connection closed, that means there was a crash. So we're gonna deal up with the crashing and everything later on. But right now the thing is that no matter what you write inside the DB variable, it's always gonna get an error in DB connection because this image is not holding any MongoDB. If we were have created an image and with the base of Mongo and Node and all of that, probably an Ubuntu image, surely it could have worked. But our goal is not to create just one image and just pile up everything inside it, rather the goal is this. So our app is ready, our app is also containerized. But right now there is no such next thing as MongoDB and we are not able to put this uh, line as well so that we can get connection between them. So in order to understand the connection between them, we have to learn more about the Docker Compose. So there we go, half of the job is done. The rest of the part, we are gonna do that in the next video. So make sure to hit that like button and let's catch up in the next one.